Sergio Perez started the 2022 Formula 1 season exceptionally well. He took pole position in Saudi Arabia, won the prestigious Monaco Grand Prix, and earned himself a plum new Red Bull contract, binding him to F1's current best team until at least the end of 2024. Red Bull clearly enjoys the dynamic Perez brings. He's experienced, level-headed, unfussy, and always prepared to put the team's interests ahead of his own. Max Verstappen calls Perez a legend, and so far results have been good enough to help propel Red Bull to what should be its first Constructors title since 2013. Perez has scored better results than any of Verstappen's teammates since Daniel Ricciardo in 2018, and there's a growing body of evidence that suggests his performances are dropping off at an alarming rate. This should be cause for concern at Red Bull, but it turns out the team is actually complicit in creating a situation where Perez is now looking a less convincing driver than the one he replaced at the end of 2020. Could and should his future place in this team be in jeopardy? This has clearly been a season of two halves for Perez, one much less impressive than the other. He outqualified Verstappen three times over the first eight races, including that brilliant pole lap for round two in Saudi Arabia. He was still overall slower than Verstappen during this stretch, but not by much, just half a tenth of a second on average. No wonder Red Bull was so keen to hand Perez a new contract. No one's been that close to Verstappen in qualifying since Verstappen was promoted from Toro Rosso to Red Bull in 2016. But Perez hasn't beaten Verstappen in qualifying since Baku in June, and since then, Verstappen's advantage over Perez has grown substantially. After qualifying half a second off Verstappen in the wet at Silverstone in July, came a run of six consecutive dry qualifying sessions where Perez's average deficit to Verstappen grew from less than a tenth to well over six tenths of a second. Since France, Perez hasn't got within seven tenths of Verstappen in qualifying, and at Monza, the gap was a full nine tenths of a second. Perez is currently performing worse compared to his own teammate than Daniel Ricciardo is against Lando Norris at McLaren, with Ricciardo's form considered so bad that he is set to leave McLaren a year earlier than his contract stipulated. Perez has spoken before about Red Bull's development taking the car balance in a direction he doesn't like. Early in the season, Red Bull was overweight, and all the teams were trying to figure out how to work with a new generation of Pirelli tyres, which have shifted the ratio of grip away from the front and towards the rear axle. With this sort of understeer car balance, Perez was thriving, and consistently driving very close to Verstappen's level. But it's not the fastest way to set up a car, and as Red Bull has added performance to RB18, so the car has become more dynamic and responsive when turning into corners. This has helped Red Bull overcome some of the limitations imposed by the new Pirelli tyres, with the consequence of shifting the prevailing balance away from the understeer tendency with which Perez was thriving. This is not Red Bull working against Perez specifically, but simply the desire to make the car faster generally. F1 cars are inanimate objects until they are driven. If performance doesn't come for free, you have to take it. Verstappen has been able to exploit that extra potential in a way Perez hasn't. At Spa, Red Bull asked Perez if he wanted a front wing flap adjustment to help make the car more responsive through sector two. Verstappen was absolutely flying at this circuit, so Red Bull encouraged Perez to move towards Max's setup to try to close the gap by making the car understeer less through the part of the lap where most of that circuit's corners are. Perez replied that he couldn't cope with such a setup adjustment. This strikes at the heart of the matter. Perez simply cannot drive the kind of car Verstappen is now dominating F1 with. Every Formula 1 team faces the challenge of producing a car that both drivers can extract the maximum from. Red Bull's current situation is extreme, but it's also not the first time Red Bull has faced this sort of quandary. Sebastian Vettel's consistent edge over Mark Webber during the latter part of their time as Red Bull teammates came mainly from Vettel's greater comfort at using the throttle much earlier than usual when exiting corners so he could get the Renault engine's exhaust gases powering the car's diffuser to increase rear grip. Webber found this technique much more difficult to adopt, but the development made the car faster overall, so the technology stayed and the gap between Vettel and Webber grew. When Stoffel Vandoorne was a McLaren Honda driver, he struggled to adapt to a faster braking system on the 2017 car that Fernando Alonso had no problem dealing with. It offered better braking performance, but at the cost of an unusual and vague response from the brake pedal. Alonso could live with this strange feeling, Van Dorn couldn't, so McLaren had to give Van Dorn a different, slower setup in order to make him comfortable enough to drive the car faster than he otherwise could. All drivers are different and cope with setup variations and car behaviour quirks in different ways. Verstappen is incredibly at ease with a car that pivots in an extreme way around the front axle. The point of rotation with which Perez feels more comfortable is significantly further rearward, 
This means Verstappen can cope with cars that have much more front grip than rear grip when turning into corners, whereas Perez prefers cars that are slower to turn and more stable when they do. Red Bull and Perez are working hard to find a setup that works for him, but they now admit that's coming at an extra cost in overall performance on his side of the garage. Red Bull would like to find a setup that allows Perez to have the car balance he wants and still go as fast relative to Verstappen as he was earlier in the season, but Red Bull admitted in Monza that it simply doesn't have the tools available to achieve this. Red Bull either has to make the car overall slower to accommodate Perez, or make it overall faster and ask Perez to deal with the consequences. Because Perez is struggling to deal with those consequences, Red Bull is now engineering a sub-optimal setup into his car so he can feel more comfortable and drive closer to his own limit. The unfortunate knock-on effect is that Perez now has a much lower potential than Verstappen when driving the same car. It's also possible that Red Bull is now favouring Verstappen with better parts because they know he can extract more from them than Perez. Since Zandvoort, for example, Perez has used a slower iteration of floor on his car because the cost cap means Red Bull cannot afford to produce another floor to the same specification that Verstappen is using. In any case, Christian Horner says the difference is only worth a tenth of a second, so not much in the grand scheme of things. Some will nevertheless interpret this as one driver being unfairly favoured over the other, but that's not really the case. The team will always focus on the quicker driver, which in this case is Verstappen, because it makes no sense to focus your development on making the car quicker for the slower one. The way to avoid being in this situation is to be the better driver in the team. Red Bull had no problem benching Alex Albon to bring Perez into the fold, then letting Albon leave for Williams after deciding Perez was definitely the best option to be Verstappen's teammate. Perez has certainly achieved better peak results than Albon since joining Red Bull, but he's also had demonstrably better cars to work with. Perez has also started more than four times the number of F1 races Albon has, so there's an argument to say Albon would have developed at a faster rate than Perez and potentially got closer to Verstappen had Red Bull stuck with him. Albon's average dry qualifying deficit to Verstappen in 2020 was less than half a second. In the second half of that season, Albon worked his average deficit down from over half a second across the first eight races to just over four and a half tenths during the remaining nine. He was always less than eight tenths off Verstappen in a dry qualifying session, and generally, the gap was less than half a second. In the RB16B of 2021, which might be considered a better direct comparison with Albon, Perez's average deficit to Verstappen was only marginally better, 0.434 seconds across 19 comparable dry qualifying sessions. As we mentioned earlier, Perez is currently trailing Verstappen by more than 6 tenths per qualifying session on average since Baku. That's a bigger average deficit than at any time since Red Bull demoted Albon to bring Perez on board. Before his Monza appendicitis setback, Albon was growing in strength at Williams, in a car that has also been developed into a faster overall package that is trickier to drive than it was before. This is not to say definitively that Albon would do better in the current Red Bull than Perez, but it's certainly not a ridiculous notion, especially as Williams admits after bringing a major update to its car for Silverstone that this development has altered the aerodynamic platform of the car in a way that makes it more unstable, so the drivers have had to adjust their driving styles accordingly. This is something Albon's recent performances suggest he has done with a certain degree of success. Verstappen's form since qualifying behind Perez in Baku suggests conclusively that Red Bull has made its car faster. Excess weight has come out, setup now copes much better with the understeer tendency of the Pirelli tyres, and Verstappen is exploiting that extra potential. Perez, unfortunately, is not. If anything, his personal trend is going in the opposite direction. Across the first eight races of 2022, Perez scored 86% of Verstappen's points. That ratio has plummeted to 44% over the past eight. Red Bull potentially signing Nick de Vries to replace Pierre Gasly at AlphaTauri will only heap further pressure on Perez if the Williams Super Sub turns out to be a longer term hit in F1. Helmut Marco was good humoured about Perez's form after a poor race performance in France, joking that maybe he drank tequila last night after the Mexican driver was overtaken for third place by George Russell's Mercedes during a late race virtual safety car restart. When Perez failed to escape Q2 at the following race in Hungary, qualifying more than eight tenths behind Verstappen, Marco told Sky Germany, he is too far behind Max Verstappen at the moment. The summer break hasn't started yet, but he already seems to be in that mode. Marco went on to say Red Bull needed to sit down with Perez and suggested his struggling driver needed to follow Verstappen's setup direction more closely in order to be nearer to the pace from the first free practice onwards. Whatever conversations have taken place since then clearly haven't yet had the desired effect. Three more races have passed since Hungary, and if anything, Perez's performances have gotten worse, not better. If Perez continues to struggle to evolve in step with the car, he could become a serious liability. 
especially if Ferrari and Mercedes reduce their own deficit to Red Bull and start to make Verstappen's life more difficult. Much has changed since Monaco, and Perez is now looking less and less like a legend, and more and more like Red Bull's biggest current weakness.